Hey everybody. Um, my friend Franco asked for me to perform one of my party tricks, and that is you give me three characters, a situation, and a place, and I give you a classic story. All in a fair game, right? Well, this one is for Franco. The oldest Mardi Gras festival in the entire country is in Mobile, Alabama. No kidding. Seriously. Carnival season starts in November and goes through March, and sometimes even April. There's a float parade almost every day in the streets, and the Mystic Societies put together the most amazing costumes and masks. They throw things to the crowds. Uh, beads, toys, candy, even moon pies, y'all. I'm telling you, it is a party and a half, and I haven't even told you about the costume balls, or the king and the queen. Well, Alonzo LaRoe loved it all, especially the costumes. And since he was a member of the Knights of Revelry, one of the mystic societies, he got to dress up every single year and ride on the floats. And it was amazing. He really was a good designer. Don't get me wrong, but the thing was, whenever the Knights did anything else in the community, get donations for charity or help each other build, um, rebuild their houses during after hurricane season, Alonzo was never to be seen. He only cared about the costumes and the parties. Last year, Alonzo got exactly what he deserved. He got appointed to be the king of the carnival. Now normally being King Felix III is an amazing role and it's a great honor, but Alonzo couldn't think of a single costume idea. He had done the fool, he had done death, but a king? He looked back at all of his old costumes and many of them were broken or looked like old toys in comparison to what this really needed to be. Well, he went to the park, sat down trying to get some inspiration from the sky and the birds, and just feeling sorry for himself, really. And a stranger walked up and asked him what was the matter. He told her. He beat his chest, he pulled his hair, he tore his clothes, he lamented the whole thing. And she listened, eating a breakfast eclair at the same time. And then she introduced her to herself. She was no other than Clara Kitty from New Orleans, the fashion designer from all of the greatest crews down there. And she had heard about Alonzo, and she had come all the way up to Mobile to help him out. Well, he was amazed already. And then she said that she had a little something special that she wanted to try out, if he was willing. See, she had invented a kind of material that... Only the good and popular people could even see. Those who couldn't see it, well, they were just useless or stupid, and who would be want to be one of them? Alonzo suddenly was hit with the amount of power he would possess by not only being the king of the carnival, but also having an amazing costume by Clara Kitty that could help him distinguish the popular people from the stupid ones. How wonderful that would be. He told her he would pay her any price at all. So she told him to come to her workshop the next day. It was a small rented room, just a loom and a stool, but he had brought exactly what she had requested, the first third of the money, plus some golden thread and the most magnificent silk that he could find. Well, she gestured over the loom after she took her goodies and said that she had already started the pattern in the machine. This machine that weaved the threads into a cloth. She really wanted his opinion on it, so would he look at the work she'd already done? He looked at the loom. He looked really hard at the loom. And he couldn't see anything at all. Not a single thread, not cloth, not material, no nothing. Well, 
she had said that those people who couldn't see it were either stupid or useless, and he knew he wasn't one of them, so obviously there was just something wrong with his eyes that day. He said that it must be amazing, and then he rushed out the door. A couple of months later, she called him back. She said that she had finished the material, and now she needed his measurements. He came to the workshop again with a second payment, some golden thread and the best silk he could find. So she, came, she, brought, she grabbed all of that and brought out a tape measure. She went up his leg, down his arms, around his waist, writing down all the numbers in her little notebook. Then she gestured over at the stool. She said there was the bolt of cloth that she had finished. Wasn't it just lovely? He looked at the stool. He looked really hard at the stool. But he didn't see a single thread, much less a bolt of cloth sitting there. And he remembered what she had said, that those people who couldn't see it were either stupid or useless. And he couldn't be one of them, could he? So he said it was amazing, and then he rushed out the door. Well, the day of the first parade arrived, and she invited him back. And she said that she wanted the honor of helping him get dressed. The costume was completely finished. He walked into her simple workshop and didn't see anything. But she went over to the stool and started picking things up. She said these were his pants. This was his shirt. These were his gloves. And she told him to take off his clothes. Good thing she was helping him get dressed because he couldn't see a thing. You do realize what's happening here, don't you? There's no such thing as invisible cloth at all. Clara Kitty had heard about Alonzo LaRoe. She had heard about his amazing costumes. She had heard about all of this wonderful creativity. But she had also heard that Alonzo had been selfish throughout the years, that he cared more about parties than he did about helping other people. And she decided that he needed to be taught a lesson. And now she had Alonzo wrapped around her finger. After she got him dressed, she pulled a full-length mirror out from behind the loom and let him see. She said, here you go, your majesty. What do you think? Is it worth that third payment? Alonzo looked in the mirror. He looked really hard in the mirror. And he couldn't see a thing except for his underwear, his socks, and his shoes. But he remembered what Clara Kitty had said about those people who could not see this. Was that they were either stupid or they were useless. He knew he couldn't be either one of them. So he said it was amazing, gave her her payment, and rushed out the door to meet all of the knights. The knights of revelry's float were just sitting just down the block. He snuck around all of his brothers and went up on the float as they were finishing up the last details. He went to the very front where his throne was sitting. He put on his crown, picked up his scepter, and waited for the parade to begin. Oh, it did. And the crowds went crazy. They were laughing and pointing. Yo, look, look, look at Alonzo's costume this year. Oh, my goodness, can you believe he did that? Oh, King Felix III has outdone himself this year. And it went on like that for a good half hour. And Alonzo thought, oh, well, I'm making the people happy. They see the magnificence of this costume. Until they got to the Spanish Plaza. And that was where little Stevie was standing on the corner playing his harmonica. And I'm telling you, even through his sunglasses, he could see the exact situation. He stopped in his tracks, looked, and pointed straight at Alonzo. Um, y'all, King Felix III, ain't he naked? He, he doesn't have any clothes on, does he? 
And that was it. The Knights of Revelry stopped their float to the side, pulled Alonzo off, and covered him in one of his old costume cloaks. And he was thoroughly embarrassed. But learning his lesson and trying to keep high spirits. He lifted his hand like he always did to the crowd and said, Hey, y'all. Let the good times roll. Thank you for listening. And have a happy Mardi Gras.